Hi, my name is Patrick Smith. I'm part of the sales team here at SFL. SFL are one of the leading Midas dealers in the UK, uh, and today I just want to give you a quick introduction to the new Midas M32 digital mixing console, and also talk a little bit about AES50 connectivity and compatibility, particularly with, with some of the stage box options that are available. I know there's a lot of questions uh, people on the internet are having about this at the minute, so we just want to prove a few concepts. So first of all, just to introduce you to the console, new M32 console from Midas. It's a 32 input channel console. Uh, you've got 16 kind of generic buses which are switchable uh, in various configurations between auxiliaries, subgroups, effect sends. Uh, on top of that you've got a further 6 matrix and then your left centre right out, giving a total of 25 mixed buses on the whole console. So quite a, a powerful, well-featured console, uh, and it, this is this is the kind of cheapest console Midas have ever produced, the most entry-level console. So it's available at a really accessible price now for Midas, which is fantastic, and we're really excited about this as a product. Users who maybe used the Behringer X32 before will probably be familiar with some of it. There is an amount of crossover between the two boards. Uh, particularly all the software and processing on here currently is, is more or less exactly the same as we had on an X32. So if you've mixed on an X32 before, you will be very familiar with the interface uh, and it's got the same kind of bank of features, same amount of processing power. So what's changed? Well, the, the answer is everything else. All the hardware here is Midas hardware. Uh, so it's a new Midas design chassis. Uh, everything, all the faders, all the encoders are Midas designed, has a much more rugged, durable, professional end feel to it. Particularly we've got a lot of features borrowed off the Pro Series consoles, which are very much an industry standard console now. So we have the Pro Series fader here, a full 100mm fader, rather than the, the shorter fader we had on X32. And all the preamps on the console as well are fully featured Midas Pro Series preamps. So we have a, a, a real audio benefit there over the X32 in terms of the audio quality we're going to be getting from those preamps. So it is a, a fairly significant upgrade on the hardware side from X32 which makes it a really exciting product at the price point. Now one thing I do want to talk about is connectivity with stage boxes. The official companion stage box for M32 is the DL16. Uh, but unfortunately whilst M32 is now here uh, and we've taken delivery as you can see of our first units DL16 uh, is a product that is still a way off, we don't know exactly when that's coming so what are your stage box options for the time being if you want to use M32? Uh, the answer to begin with you can use the X32 stage boxes, the S16 uh, but to us that doesn't make an enormous amount of sense uh, because it doesn't have that Midas Pro Series preamp uh, part of what we're paying for here, part of what we're investing in here is that increased quality uh, and the preamps are a really important part of that we feel. So the, your other options for stage boxes uh, are the existing Pro Series range. Uh, so we've got the DL151, uh, 153 and the DL251 which I've got here. I know there's a lot of users have a lot of questions about compatibility uh, between M32 particularly in these stage boxes. Uh, and we know that there are some issues, but we've been doing some testing here and just wanted to prove the concept and show you that this can work. So what I've got here is a DL251 stage box, which is the stage box we normally use with something like a Pro 2. Uh, and we, we plugged it in and tried it, and initially, with everything running on the most up-to-date firmwares, we did have some, some problems. Although the system passed signal, uh, it wasn't uh, f up to full standard, there was some noise on it, there was a, a lack of, of control, full control of the stage box. Uh, but what we found is if we actually roll back the firmware in the DL251, uh, and we just go back one version uh, to firmware 2.05.04, then we can actually get this working fully and I just want to show this to you so you can see on the console here I've got a microphone plugged into the stage box and we can see on the console here as I talk into the microphone we're getting level in 
I've got full head amp control as I wind the head amp down we lose level as I wind it up we gain level so this is this is a, a full head amp control here 48 volt phantom power works uh, and, and I promise you that is that's not just the console it is definitely working so we're really happy with that we have a fully functional stage box and we tested the outputs as well so we're, we're really happy that, that we now have on this firmware M32 is on the current firmware DL251 just rolled back one version of the firmware and they're, they're fully compatible, they're talking really happily. In terms of exactly how this works, uh, obviously uh, we, we do have to run the DL251 in 48K mode. So uh, if you're running it with a Pro Series console you'll be running it in 96. We've just got this button on the front here to change that from 96 to 48K. Uh, if you're used to running these with Pro Series, you'll also know that you need two lines of AS50 to get the full 48 in 16 out from the DL251. Of course, because we're running this in 48K mode now, we've we've doubled the capacity of the AS50, so I can now get the full 48 in and 16 out on a single line. Uh, so I've only actually got a single line of AS50 running from here to the console. And then on the patch on the console, I now have access to the full complement of those channels. So I don't need to use both AES50 ports. I have two AES50 ports on the back of the M32. Uh, so that's the DL251 working. Uh, we've not yet tested the DL151, uh, 153, those boxes, but I'll update this as soon as we have. Uh, as soon as we're able to run that test, see what we can do, see what we can get working there. Uh, but DL251 definitely works comfortably and stably. Uh, looking at other AES50 devices, what I've got here is a Clark Technic DN9650 network bridge uh, and we use this to get AES50 into various other network protocols. So again, just as a bit of a proof of concept, we put a Dante card in here and we're just seeing if we can get signal uh, from, from the M32 in and out of the DN9650. Uh, and again, all we have to do is put this into 48K mode. The no firmware changes, this is completely happy on its current firmware, we just put it into 48k mode, uh, just do that via connecting with a computer, it's very quick and easy. Uh, and just to prove that concept here, we can see, uh, I'm just running logic here and you can see that the mic as I speak into it is getting signal in, so we're, we're happy signals coming in here via the DN9650. Uh, and also if I just play on logic here and we have a look down on the board we can see that I'm now getting signal back. So we've got two-way connectivity via the DN9650. So that's two AS50 devices that we're, we're really happy are working really solidly, really stably. Uh, so we'll, we'll give you more information as soon as we can on some of the other boxes. We're fully intending to test that and get some ideas. Uh, but, but certainly as a proof of concept, we're really happy that we can get an M32 working with the Pro Series stage boxes. So I hope that was helpful, hope that was informative. So my name is Patrick Smith from SFL. If you've got any questions or if you want to come and see the consoles or demo or test any of this with us, you're always welcome to stop by at SFL. You can contact me, Patrick, at sflgroup.co.uk. Always really happy to hear from you. Thanks for watching.